Welcome to another Smart Money Concepts video. Have you ever thought about what the most powerful tools are when it comes to making money? You might answer education, skills, or connections. And while all of those are most certainly important, the most powerful tool you can use is your mind. However, many people find it difficult to become rich because their mind is hindering them from understanding their full financial potential. You know, the mindsets of the rich and poor are completely different. That's why in this video, I'll help you realize the real reason you're broke and how to fix it. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Smart Money Concepts videos. People in general usually travel similar paths. In the Western culture, it's normal to go to school, get married, start a family, and work for 30 years or more and then retire. At least, this is the way most of us were brought up. Sadly, most people think that this is the way life should be. From a financial and life satisfaction perspective, working for several decades until retirement is the kind of a mindset that keeps so many people poor. The truth is, 99% of poor people have this mindset. And in this example, when I say poor, I'm referring to the people who are living well below their financial potential. Did you know that from a solely statistical perspective, 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? This group of individuals is living in a completely suboptimal financial situation. Most middle class Americans, based on these figures, do not have the right financial mindset. To be honest, very few people have the mindset that will make them wealthy. But what kind of mindset makes someone stay poor? Passive versus active mindset. Always being passive doesn't allow for financial abundance. This mindset presents itself in various ways in all points of our lives. If, for example, you are a college student, these two mentalities can really affect you. One can hinder you, while the other pushes you to be your best. Let's look at this in an academic context. If you have a passive mind, you will likely not begin to apply yourself until two weeks out from sitting for a final exam thinking that you only need 65% on the test in order to pass with a 60 in the class. You make a plan about your study sessions to make sure you minimize the given time to review your learning materials as much as you can to get the 65% you need and move on to the next class. But if you have an action mindset, you think very differently. You will take no notice of what mark you should get because you want to achieve a perfect score on the final exam. So that will make you study for the next two weeks continuously. And because of this, you get a scholarship for the following year. This makes you realize that going the extra mile really pays off. These opposing mindsets are not only for academic purposes, but can also be applied in the business world. After graduating from college, most people have three options, work for the government, a private company, or become self-employed. When you work for the government, you can enjoy job stability. However, the pay and growth sector is significantly less than that of the private sector. On the other hand, working for a private company gives you lower job security, but the pay and growth potential are much higher if you can withstand the competition. Let's take a look at how the lives of Jim and Dan differ based on the major decisions they end up making. After college, Jim was talking to his parents about his future. His parents suggested that he should have a stable job that assures him a bi-weekly salary. As both of his parents worked for the government for their whole careers, they believe following their personal paths is the best option for their son. Jim is convinced by his parents and decides to work for the government. Dan had the same conversation with his parents. They also wanted him to get a government job, and although the salary and pensions were enticing, Dan wanted something more. He felt like he wanted to experience the challenge of working for a private company. Jim's first few years at work seemed great. He enjoyed the daily tasks, the pay was good enough, and he didn't have to work after 4 p.m. We can say he definitely had a work-life balance. Dan, on the other hand, didn't earn as much as his friends who were working for the government. He even had to work 50 hours per week. So does that mean he made the wrong decision? Well, there were good things about his job too. He learned a lot from it and he got to be a part of exciting projects as well. These things kept him passionate about what he was doing. Five years later, there were lots of changes in the lives of these two. 
Jim is still working for the government, but now that he's married, it seems that the circumstances are not as good as when he was single. It is true that he can spend a lot of time after work with his family, especially his newborn child, but since he has to provide for a family, he's now facing some financial challenges. So he's considering moving to the private sector, but he's also afraid of risking the loss of his stable job. How about Dan? He's still working at a private company, but he is now a manager of a well-known firm. Although he has longer work hours, he can still spend time with his family and fulfill his dream of being a great dad. Looking back at his decision to join the private industry makes him happy that he worked hard and now has more than enough of what his family needs. Extending the story timeline doesn't change that much in their lives. Jim continues to have a financially mediocre lifestyle, and Dan continues to climb the career ladder while increasing his income over time. We see that the difference between these two lifestyles boils down to their mindsets. Jim chose the safe route due to his passive mindset, which made him make the most conservative decisions. Dan was willing to take some risks to work in private industry, but having an action mindset enabled him to enjoy much greater rewards in his career. Let's talk about another character named Kim. After college, Kim decided to start her own business. However, six months later, Kim still hadn't made much progress, so she began to doubt her decision to take the risk of being self-employed. Kim's friends whom she went to college with don't agree with her decisions. A year went by, but Kim was still very far from her dream of having financial freedom. Kim's friends were worried about her, so they advised her to enroll in college because they knew that it would be easier for her to get a job after graduation because she's very smart. Kim explained that she might get a stable job with a decent salary, but she didn't think it's what she wanted because it wouldn't help her to reach her goal of becoming rich. Her friends couldn't understand why she was willing to suffer in poverty when she had better options. Finally, Kim was able to find her way in business, which made her profitable and helped her reach her financial goals. How did that happen? Simply put, perseverance. It started with having the right mindset, an action mindset. I'll bet that you're now wondering whether you have a passive or an action mindset. Well, if you can't decide yet, Smart Money Concepts has a lot more to share with you to get you in the right frame of mind. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell now to get notified whenever we post a new video. Like we discussed earlier, passive mindset manifests itself in various ways. One instance where this is highly prevalent is in investing. We have to accept the fact that risk is always involved in investing. It might be true that the market provides an average of 7% return over the course of history, but take note that there are many years that are not as good as others, so there's a possibility that an investor might lose his or her money. If you have a passive mindset, knowing how much risk is involved will make you opt out. But did you also realize that not investing is more unfavorable than investing? People with a passive mindset want to avoid financial risk as much as possible because they're used to having just enough money to get by. They can't imagine losing even just a small amount of money from their savings. So they keep their money in a savings account, thinking that this is the best way to keep their money safe. Sadly though, in the savings account, you can only get about a 0.09% return per year. How can that help you in times of inflation? You could even end up losing money with taxes and fees or simply by missing the most lucrative years in a bull market. Still, you might think that by putting your money in a savings account, you can keep it safe. Look at it this way. If you had the same amount of money invested in the market and received a 5% return even after inflation is factored in, you would still be way ahead. Even with that knowledge, many Americans fail to take advantage of this tool. Statistics show that people with an action mindset are enjoying the benefits of investing. Recent figures show that 84% of all U.S. stocks are owned by 10% of the richest Americans. So, if you have an action mindset, let your money work for you and you will definitely achieve financial success. Not only your career or investment strategy, but also all aspects of your life will be affected by your mindset. There are two kinds of people, the one who will focus on what they can't change and the one who will focus on what they can. Most people focus on what they can't turn around. Things like their upbringing, their bosses, and the people in authority that surround and suffocate them. When you blame your lack of success on external factors, you tend to have a passive mindset. Whereas, action-minded people gauge the situation they're in and find a way to make it work for them. 
We all know that in reality, every person has his or her own obstacles. A passive-minded person, however, sees the obstacles and accepts them into their life. This is why they can't reach their goals of becoming financially successful. On the other hand, an action-minded person sees obstacles and finds a way to get to the other side. So, starting today, stop complaining like a passive-minded person. Choose to take action and watch the world amaze and reward you for your courage. So, there you have it, the two mindsets that determine whether or not you will stay broke or become rich and successful. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons now to make sure that you don't miss the next Smart Money Concepts video.